Okay, so I'm just going to do a glaze today on this copy of Titian's Portrait of a Man in a Quilted Sleeve. This is about three quarters size. Um, it's a really beautiful painting and just if you look on the National Gallery of London's website you can uh, sort of look up close at it and um, actually see how he's added the glazes on what I think is, I'm just, I've used raw umber and white and a little bit of burnt umber um, for the hair and the beard but essentially it's just raw umber and white so just assuming that Titian worked in that way um, we'll just see if we can uh, get close to it. Uh, you know obviously it's not exactly right this palette he you know, some people say you just use a very, very limited palette, um, but I'm sure there's yellow in there. It's probably Naples yellow, which honestly I haven't got, so I'll just use cadmium yellow. But at the end of the day, we're just still going to mix it. Um, and in Joseph Shepard's book, he says he used alizarin crimson, so I'm just going to go with that. Um, to be honest, I'm much more comfortable using that just for shadows. So. I've got this, this is a Michael Harding sap green here, uh, which is very, very cool. So we'll just, you know, see how it goes. That's yellow ochre. Yeah, because uh, even if the colours that I'm using on this palette aren't exactly right, we can still get quite close to a sort of um, some kind of understanding of how of his working process. Um, don't know if I did say uh, I was going to sort of work into the underpainting again. I've just had um, you know one session with it, but I always say you know you can always work into uh, you know the drawing continues with the glazing. So I just thought maybe we'll just glaze straight into it. So I was going to just do the underpainting off camera, but you know why not? Just let's just see how it goes. So I'm just going to go and do some of the darks with this colour. You can see here very quickly. Um, it starts to sort of fall into place slightly. I don't know about that colour. It's a bit gross. Yellow, this yellow because I'm um, not very transparent. It's all quite dark. So we're going to have time to just to mix over to mix different paint that I put down into each other, different the, the different colours. So yeah, just bear with me, it's going to be a bit crude for a while. This is, yeah, I've oiled out and I'm quite happy with it. I'm using board and I primed it well, and obviously, uh, you know, I've got this further prime, which is the you know the layer of the underpainting. So it feels like that's going on quite well. Just putting a tiny bit of medium in with this sweeny bit, and I can see that. Oh wow. Well. Well, there's a lot to do really but I'm sure Titian would have done at least a few glazes at least sort of four this is where it's really satisfying because it's oiled out well and I can you can s still see the layer underneath as I paint on these upper glazes so I'm just putting on such a sort of thin coat go right over the eyeball there it's probably not quite right but 
No, it doesn't feel dark enough at all. So I'm going to use this one crimson. Let's try. Um, Joseph Shepard uses uh, Liz and Crimson and Burnt Umber. Some of the very dark darks. Titian did use Lapis Lazuli. So I'm just using Ultramarine. Just got to be careful about this drawing, it doesn't look right suddenly. This is quite warm. But I can always go over it and I'm going to make sure I'm losing the drawing underneath. So I'm just going to wipe, just wipe it so I can see it. I'm sure there's black actually as well. A speck of medium. It's like he's wearing eyeliner. Um, I mean I'm just using a hog's hair but it's quite a sharp line but I'll probably sharpen it by painting the highlight it's the it's the lid the lightness it's going to create that the sharpness one thing I noticed It suddenly looked quite big here, but probably something you know we would go over uh, after we've done the um, the lights of the skin of the cheek. But definitely this feels a bit too wide, and I've I purposely left that. Basically, you know, I've just blocked in, and um, yeah, so I was aw I'm aware of that. on all of these areas just needed you know just a transition It's a bit more, it's a hooded lid, so that I'll have to just adjust. So I'm just going over very, very lightly. And now you can see that actually I can use exactly the same brush to just pull off paint. Trusty finger as well works. This is this is quite a cool area, so maybe it's I'm just doing it to sort of just adjust the value slightly. Feel like 
quick. We're just losing the drawing slightly, actually. So. So as not to do that, don't want to lose the drawing, lose the likeness. Just, you know, none of this is correct yet. It's they're just they're just guesses. It's all guesses, and it starts to fall into place in a while, hopefully. Actually, I'll mix this for the lips. It's just not good at all. But he's, you can see that's all crimson. So this is for the deepest tones, but it is cool in there, so I'm adding some blue. We can we can definitely find it as long as we don't rush. So that's actually in there, isn't it? Did lid. And I'm just so gently just going, it's, it's a glaze. Just, it's, uh, it's a really lovely feeling actually, just to very, very softly go over. A smooth primed surface. The thing is, we'll never be able to get it exactly right, I suppose. Is that the point? Um, no, I don't, I just don't. It's impossible, so we can just let that go, that's fine. And, um, you know, I'm just going to try and get close to the sort of colours if I can eventually. Um, and, you know, I will show this, this technique, because I think this is my favourite sort of palette, actually. I've tried a limited palette. Well, yeah, like a Zorn palette. Uh, and Titian used something very like that as well, actually. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to be able to mix a bit of blue and green. You can see this um, shadow here. It's very warm. You know, I put that in. And in fact, I can just brush a few areas because we'll blend it as well in a while.
Just see problems with the drawing from before. Okay, so can't be two, this can't be one. It's basically that is only although I know it's on my brush. This is raw umber and black for this sort of area. What's gonna what's gonna create that is using if we get some yellow and red in, but you just see this area around the cheek, you can just see the glazing that he's put on. I must make sure I don't run out of palette. If I mix something down here, still got I've got quite a big brush actually, which I'll use. Um, relatively big. And we'll just try and get something that resembles the skin in the highlight. So yellow, this is vermilion today, I've still got a bit left in my tube. So you can kind of see it's, it's fairly light, I, don't, I haven't really mixed enough actually, too light. Although, yeah that's silly. It's always a surprising amount of colour, so I'm just a bit of yellow ochre actually as well. Not sure about that. <coughs> just putting a tiny bit of um, raw umber. medium. I think that's just going to look really really yellow. It's quite difficult to tell at first so we'll just try and just put on a few dashes here and there. I think it's sort of okay. Sorry if my board wobbles. I'm afraid it's just going to wobble. It's just my, I need to get a new easel. I'll just try and brush slowly. Right. See straight away it just it just, just so transformative, it's just really lovely. I mean not my painting, we're just glazing the process itself. And yeah, I think this is where it works. You can start, you can use, 
you know, the areas that I have just done a sort of shadow glaze, I can just blend into those. I'm actually going to support the board. I'll paint right up to the edge. It's more just to get something on, but. 